You're listening to or watching our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. My name is Pastor Michael Eton. I'm your host for tonight's Bible study, as well as I serve as the senior pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. I want to welcome you once again to our Bible study, as well as I want to extend an invitation for those who are in Paul's Valley who do not have a church on, those who may have been saved, maybe through a radio or television ministry here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you need to find a church home. I want to invite you to the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Why don't you join us at 311 North Dunbar, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma again. We're at 311 North Dunbar in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Bring a family member or a friend and join us this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. service. And also, before you come, why don't you go ahead and visit our website at Hear God's Word at Bethlehem.com and get to know us there. Once you get to know us, uh, scroll down the link and follow or friend us on our Facebook page, Instagram x now which was twitter and we'd love for you to be a part of our cyber church family but ultimately we want to see your face in this place this coming sunday at the 11 a.m service or better yet join us in sunday school at 10 a.m once again for the first timers you're watching us here in our wednesday zoom bible study and uh, this is what's going to happen over my shoulder here. We're going to have an opening prayer, announcements, the reading of the word, the introduction video, the uh, Bible study itself, the invitation, and uh, the benediction. So let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. As your word says, we hallowed thy name. And we ask that thy kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven, Father. We want to ask you to forgive us of our sins, wash us and cleanse us, that we might be in right fellowship with you, that we might be in right relationship with you, that we may hear a word from the Lord. Father, encompass everything that is said and done tonight. Well, this evening, this morning, this afternoon, in Jesus' name, amen, and praise the Lord, amen, and praise the Lord. A few announcements, uh, I will send out the pastor's uh, prayer requests and the pastor's text this coming Thursday, tomorrow, but I want to thank those who have prayed. I want to thank you for praying for Reverend Chad Gray. Uh, there was a miracle that happened at the hospital. I can't tell you, but I'm so elated at seeing the power of God working that young man's life. And I'm probably going to tell it on this coming Sunday, but continue to pray for Reverend Gray. Uh, we are also just so elated and excited about what God had done and answered prayer for the first ladies and minister's wives in Widows Conference, your prayer matters. It happens after prayer. And uh, these ladies are still brimming over what happened there in the mountain and so for Oklahoma for first ladies, ministers, wives, and widows in the conference. And want you to thank God and continue to pray uh, for that ministry that was birthed straight out of Bethlehem Baptist Church. Uh, also, I uh, will remind you to continue to pray uh, for those on the prayer list, and we're excited to see what God does in the life of his people as they pray, and I want you to pray uh, for me as I will be involved in this uh, Pastors Conference 2024 in Sacramento in February. I need you to pray for me because it happens after prayer. I've seen uh, just this past week, I'm so excited at what happens when God's people pray. What happens when God's people seek his faith? We here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church do believe in the power of prayer. 
because there's so much evidence of what happens when we pray. And lastly, I've been asking you uh, to continue to pray uh, for this series, this Yes series, um, into which I've really been wanting to metamorphosize people's lives by encouraging you um, to say yes to God. There's some things that God wants to do here at Bethlehem Baptist Church or through the Bethlehem Baptist Church. But in order for that to happen, you have to say yes to the Lord. Let me say it again. In order for that to happen, you have to say yes to the Lord. It, I'm, I'm talking about a yes 10 years ago. I'm not talking about a yes two years ago. In order to manifest God's perfect will in your life, you have to have what I'm calling a perpetual yes. Um, that when God leads you or directs you to do something, you say yes. Even as the scripture we've been standing on all month long, Luke chapter five, verse four, God told them to launch out into the deep in order for that great miracle to happen. They had to say yes. And God metamorphosized their lives, took them from being uh, fishers of fish to fishers of men. And because they said yes, this world would never be the same. The whole world, it seems to be dependent upon what happens in the Middle East where 12 uh, men said yes to God. And in 2024, this could be the best year of your life if you simply learn to say yes to God. And I, I want to give you that miracle. And we, we've been seeing so many miracles of people who said yes the disciples said, yes, I will launch. And we saw what happened when they said, yes, I will launch. Uh, there was others who said, yes, I will launch. And God took that little happy meal and manifested a miracle that fed 5,000. Joshua said, yes, I will leap out into the promises of God. And they were able to take that promised land, which was flowing with milk and honey. And they was able to possess houses that they did not build and fields that they did not plant because they said yes. In order for Israel to be transformed, a little boy who grew up in the church or in the temple in Old Testament terminology had to say, yes, Lord, I will listen. And when he learned to listen, God's program and message would begin to echo throughout that temple where there was evil and wickedness. And the people from the temple to all of Israel's lives changed because someone learned to listen to God. It doesn't take many people to listen to God for miracles to happen. We told you it was one Samuel. We told you in Judges it was one Gideon, this one man had to, so trying to teach you God's mathematics because we live in a culture where we think we have to have a crowd. We think we have to have a lot of people. We think we have to have a, a big church and a big preacher. And I'm here to tell you, it's nothing about the church or the preacher. All you need is a big God. Hello, somebody. You've heard me say it many times before and God is showing up and showing out even at this time. I may not serve at a mega church, but I do serve a mega God. And tonight, we're going to look at a message entitled, Yes, Lord, I Will Lead. And we're going to get into some fascinating points about this one. And then this coming Sunday, Yes, Lord, I Will Lose. Because sometimes in this Christian life, the greatest miracle that can happen in the greatest way that you can glorify God is to lose. Woo! That's deep. You won't hear that on the television unless I'm out there saying it. 
Yes, Lord, I will lose. I will give you glory in the midst of my heartaches, my pain, my sorrow. I will learn to say hallelujah anyhow. Hello, somebody. And then this last message of the series, yes, Lord, I will lay. God challenges us to lay up treasures in heaven. If you want to be blessed of God, on the earth. You've got to learn how to lay up your treasures in heaven because that is the key to God opening up the windows of heaven as well. You can be blessed in heaven as well as here on earth and see when he pour out of blessings. And that blessing don't necessarily always mean financially. Pour out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. So we want you, Bethlehem, and people of God, to get a glimpse of who God is this first month, because it could metamorphosize your life. That's what I'm going for this month, metamorphosis in the lives of the people of God, metamorphosis here at the study here at the church, and metamorphosis on the, on the broadcast, broadcast 180 million through satellite, 29 million in cable television, uh, the Secret to Your Best Life, the book I wrote, uh, that, that kind of hinges upon this point that God has plans for your life, but in order for you to live out those plans, Bethlehem and saints of God, you've got to say yes. And tonight, you've got to learn how to say, yes, Lord, I will leave. Yes, Lord, I will leave. We're going to read tonight, uh, Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, 8, and 22. And you're hearing and reads as follows. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to aid his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from there. Verse 8, then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. Verse 22, and Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, you know I love to see Bethlehem in the Bible. Arriving in Bethlehem, that small little city, it wasn't a, a mega city in Bethlehem, that place where Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Ephrathah, that small place where God would call out, woo, the king of David had come first, but he can't with, with Jesus Christ. Hello, son. God don't need mega cities, mega churches, mega. All he needs is people who believe in him and he can move and work in small places and small numbers in Jesus' name. Bethlehem, as the barley harvest seized or harvest was beginning, as the barley harvest was beginning. I read to you Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, 8, and 22. May God only bless the doers to his holy and magnificent word in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're going to share a message. Yes, Lord, I will leave. We're going to look on around three points. The Holy Spirit gives us utterance. We want you to take a look and see the trust to leave. Take a look at this and in this text to see the tenderness to leave. And take a look in this text to see the time to leave. The trust to leave, the tenderness to leave, and the time to leave. One Christians to know today that Christians must at times discern when it is time for you to leave to survive. Let me say that again. Christians must at times discern when it's time for you to leave to survive. We're going to look at this brief video. And then we'll get to the word. Hey, 
Have you ever been loved with a no matter what love? You know, the kind of love that stays and continues to try even when it's difficult. Maybe by a parent who continued to love us when we were unlovable. Or by a child who doesn't care if we've showered or have put on weight or slip into a grouchy mood. Or by a friend who shows up just when we need a lift. It may be a rare thing, but we're changed when we experience this no matter what love. The book of Ruth is the story of a young widow named Ruth who commits to leaving her country and all that's familiar to accompany her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to the homeland of Israel. Ruth pledges a no matter what kind of love to Naomi. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. This no matter what love is the kind of love that our God offers to you and me every day, all the time. Through the gift of his son, Jesus, who died on the cross, that we might have an ongoing relationship with him, God pledges to us, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. When we receive God's no matter what love, we are changed. And when we invest the same kind of love in those around us, they're changed as well. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord. Uh, this map here I've been using uh, for the last several uh, studies. And uh, today on the map, and this was when uh, Joshua conquered and how he conquered, we see the red arrow shows that how they went in and conquered the land down here in Judah. Then after he conquered Judah, he went up here and, and conquered up here in what we know as Galilee during Jesus' time. It was Samaria, uh, Galilee, Samaria, and Judah. And uh, this is where and how Joshua conquered. But uh, we're looking at Ruth's day, and we see on the map Moab is down here. Now, remember uh, Bethlehem was right here was where she was from. Um, but she was uh, at, in the text we're looking at tonight, over here in Moab. And she would, as a widow, would have to make this arduous journey uh, back up through here around the mountains. They were very dangerous uh, doing and at and around those mountains and would have to come up through here through Jericho and come on back down and swing on back down here, which was a very hard journey. And it was a journey that uh, she was taking and she had no resources. She was a widow. She had lost her two sons and had lost her husband and and one of her daughter-in-law stayed back here in Moab, but God had put upon her heart that it was time to leave. She had lost everything and it was time to leave. There's somebody listening at the sound of my voice. And in order for your life to be metamorphosized, you have to come to the conclusion in your life that it's time to leave. Let me say it again. Could be speaking to somebody who's in an ungodly relationship with a man or a, mom or a woman that does not know God. And God tonight, this evening, this afternoon is saying it's time for you to leave that relationship. Somebody may be in an abusive relationship and you're being beaten. You and your children are being misused and abused. And God is saying that it's time to leave. There's somebody who's been laid off in a place. And God is, is telling you just like Oh, Sister Naomi, oh, you're in New York, but it's it's time for you to, 
leave and go back to Wisconsin. You, 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 you are in LA and it's, it's time for you to leave and come back to Oklahoma. Um, somebody, God is telling you it's not working out for you and it's time for you to leave. And there's somebody, um, God is saying that it is time for you to leave where you are to take this opportunity or this door that is open for you. It's time for you to leave where you are and go through the door that I have opened for you. It's time for you to leave. But in order for you to be able to do that, you've got to be able to trust to leave, to trust to leave. See, like I said, Naomi was a widow, and we were talking about pastors' widows at the conference this last weekend. I say we like I was there, but Sister Eton and her ministry said was talking. You know, I have a heart for widows, and and because widows can lose everything, and even for pastors' wives who are widows, they can lose everything. They they lose their husband, and if they're staying in the parsonage. I've heard uh, horror stories about how widows have been kicked out of the parsonage. I've, I've heard how churches have turned their backs on the widows and, and didn't do anything to help the widow to survive. And especially if they're at a bigger church that can't afford um, to take care of the pastor's wife and the pastor who have given his life 20, 40, 30 years, the, the widow at the church should be taken care of. Uh, oh, but, and it should be happening. Hello, somebody. And in our culture and our today, it's, it's, it's a very, very cutthroat situation when a, when, a, when a first lady in many churches loses her husband. See, it was even worse in this text. See, because Sister Naomi, um, they didn't have anything that, that we have today. They didn't have Section 8. They didn't have uh, what they call in Texas the Long Star Card or uh, back in the day, I forgot what they call oh, food stamps. Um, they, they didn't have food banks that we have. Uh, in a, you see, uh, for her to be a widow, you know, and that's why the Bible says in James, uh, but there's nothing more pure that we can do in each time's translation than to take care of widows and orphans because they were the ones who were left and not able to provide for themselves or provide for, for their families. And Naomi was out there destitute, but she heard, oh, that God was moving amongst his people. And oh, sister Naomi had to trust to leave. Let me say it again. She had to trust to leave. Naomi heard in Moab that God had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. And she and her mother-in-law prepared to return home from there. She had to trust to leave. She had to trust God to make that journey that I showed you on the map. She had to trust God to be Jehovah Jireh to provide for her every need when she got to Bethlehem. She had to trust God. Somebody's listening at the sound of my voice and you've got to trust God to lead. This reminds me of when I uh, left staff and went up to my mother in Colorado Springs and my family there and uh, I had left staff. I didn't have any way of uh, making a living, but God sent me up there to finish writing. I finished writing three book projects when I was there and I still wasn't getting a check. And then God did something uh, that, that, that I had to trust him for like no other time in my life, but it was the best decision that I made. I had to trust God to leave and go back to Texas. I had to trust God to leave when I didn't have a place to stay. When I, I had to trust God to leave when I didn't know where my food was coming. God told me 
to go back and eventually had me go back because he was going to call me to the uh, to the church there in Abilene, Texas, Holiday Hills Baptist Church there in, in, in Texas, which was the beginning of the metamorphosis in my life. Um, but I had to make the biggest step of faith that I ever had to make. I had to leave my family there. Oh, I had to leave everything. And I had to trust God to leave somebody listening in at the sound of my voice. you got to trust God to leave. I had to, I had to, he had to provide everything, shelter, food, gas. Hello, somebody. But Psalms 132, 15 says, I will bless her with abundant provisions and I will satisfy her poor with bread. Don't you know you can trust God to leave? Many women won't leave. Oh, a home where they're being provided for. Um, and many people, many women won't leave because they don't trust God uh, to provide for their every niece. And you get stuck in places. You, you have a good job and God is telling you to leave, but you don't trust God. Oh, to leave. Uh, uh, there may be even a preacher man that God is calling to another church. And, and you don't trust God to leave because you had Oh, you have it real good there. I had to do that too. That's another part of my testimony to leave uh, Bethlehem, uh, not Bethlehem, but uh, uh, to leave Holiday Hills Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas. That was another way I had to trust God to leave. And boy, was that the best decision. Some of the best decisions in my life was when I trust God to leave. Woo, let me say it again. Some of the best decisions that I made in my life, I, I trust God to leave. You know, there it had, it, I was living in a, a much better house. I think I gave away uh, uh, a thousand square foot in the house that we lived. We lived in in Abilene, uh, different, you know, came here and get a thousand square feet, uh, 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 highest paid pastor there. Um, um, there and, and, and Sister Etan had an excellent job and, and, and we was doing good in the hood. But then God said, leave. And I had to trust God. That, that was the biggest yes that I had to give to God because it was the best yes that I had to give because I left and I had to allow God to provide for our every need. You see, when, 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 when we came, we lost a whole income and the bigger income in our family. Hello, so my sister Etan was making bank. <laughs> but we had to trust God to leave. It's a God thing. And he has blessed it. He's blessed us abundantly. And he has satisfied us. Hello, somebody. And he can do the same thing for you. But you've got to trust God to leave. You've got to say yes. And it has to be a perpetual yes, as I said on Sunday. If I'd have stopped saying yes, I'd be, oh, I'd be there in Abilene in a good place, but out of the will of God. Woo! Undoubtedly, God probably would have spunk, spanked my behind there had I not left. Hello, somebody. For well, God's anointing, like, uh, like Samson, when he woke up that morning, he told that girl how to cut his hair. And he woke up, thought he was going to do what he did before, but the anointing had left. You see, when you don't obey the word of God, even if you're living a good life, when you say no to God, you say no to his anointing and pointing upon your life. I don't know anything about that, but I do know this. Uh, I'm going to trust him. And that's what I had to do. The second point, at least I keep us too long, Bethlehem, the saints of God. Yes, Lord, I will leave. Yes, Lord, I will leave. The tenderness to leave. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husband and to me. May the Lord show you kindness as he has shown kindness to your dead husband and to me. 
See, one of the reasons sometimes in some situations it's so hard to trust God to lead is because we've developed a tender relationships. Not undoubtedly for me to leave Colorado and come back down. It was hard to leave mother in a safe place and, and my sister and my, and my immediate family. But I had to trust God to leave even though I had tender feelings. Um, to leave some places, to leave my, my home church, whoo, my home city, my home town. I had, I had some tender feelings about, oh, those places and people there, but I had to trust God to leave. And parenthetically, um, when you do this, Sometimes it won't be popular. See, there were some folk who believed that God led me to the church there in Abilene, but they didn't believe that God led me away from the church. And they were so upset and angry and mad at me. Even folk who had left town, wasn't even living in Abilene no more, was mad at me because I said yes to God and had to trust God to leave. There are other places that I have left and people were mad at me and they've done some things even against me because I felt God was leading me. I felt God had more for me. And even though I had tender relationships, I have more of a tender relationship with God and I had to trust God to live. So I'm not telling you it's going to be easy to leave in some situations. Some situations, they're going to be upset and mad at you. They're upset and mad at you. It's like I was upset and mad at my mother when she left Dallas to go up to Colorado Springs. But in the end, that was the best thing that ever happened because my sister was able to take care of her in ways that I would have never been able to take care of her. We've got to learn on the other side of the folk that's leaving by the voice of God to accept God's will for that person's life. And undoubtedly, if you're a good person, you, you develop tenderness. But you got to still believe. Hello, somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. But I imagine you've already got the message and I'm not all, all the way finished yet. But this last point, uh, and let me share this one before I go. Talking about the tenderness. May the Lord enable each of you to find Rest in the home of your husband. This was tenderness. And she kissed them, so they wept aloud. It was a tender situation. I've got to leave, but my heart is torn. I think I shared this with Bethlehem before, too. When I left Abilene, I was in the car. I was crying. <laughs> and I don't cry that much. <laughs> And since each time I was driving, I was crying when I left uh, when I left uh, Holiday Hills there in Abilene, Texas. I was crying. I was crying. But guess what? I had to leave. It's God's purpose and plan for my life. And she had to leave. There was a tenant. She had to leave. She kissed him. And they wept aloud. You see, when you develop tender relationships, some relationships you have to leave, you got to leave crying to be in the will of God. I'd rather cry uh, for leaving in the will of God than to shed those tears that God will beat our behinds with. <laughs> You're going to cry one way or the other. Might as well be crying for doing something good. Hello, somebody. And this is why. Those who are listening at the sound of my voice, you got to trust God to lead because it's time. Talking about tonight, yes, Lord, I will leave. Yes, Lord, I will leave. The time to leave 
I'm doubt if you're listening at the sound of my voice. It's time for you to leave. It's time for you to leave quickly. She heard and she prepared to leave. Because it was time. And if you know the whole story of Naomi, and I heard Dr. Tony Evans preach this text to me for the first time when I was there at uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, whew, probably over 30 years ago, but I still remember him preaching this text. It says, so Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was being, beginning. You know, and Dr. Evans said, don't look over that. Don't look over that it was barley harvest time because this would set in place some sovereign providential meetings that wouldn't have happened outside of barley harvest. So they had to get there at a certain time so old Sister Ruth could be in that barley field at a certain place and at a certain time for old Brother Boaz to walk across the scene and wonder whose young maiden is this? It was timing. It was timing. It was God's timing. It was God's timing. And because it was God's timing, we like to talk about a rhema word. It's a word especially for us, personalized, uh, a personal text, uh, uh, a personal email, uh, a, a personal letter from God. And God says, you need to leave because it is time. I'm setting up circumstances and situations where you need to be at the, the right place at the right time. And that's why it is time for you to leave. It is your barley harvest time. It's your barley harvest time. It's time to leave. Same place we learn about the timing of Esther. He said these immortal words, and he said to Esther, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But then he said these immortal words, but, but you and your families, fam you and your father's family will perish. And he said this, who knows but that you have come to royalty or royal position for such a time as this is time for you to leave. It's time for you to leave. And we know the end of her story. You need to read the whole book of Ruth. She did meet Boaz, and Boaz was a kinsman redeemer. And in modern day terms, the best way to put it, because we don't really have anything uh, that really correlates in our culture to a kinsman redeemer. Um, but uh, in our day and time, he was a man that would be willing to marry her and take care of her and her whole family. Remember, they're destitute. Naomi's destitute, Ruth destitute. They, uh, uh, Boaz is willing to do what most men in our culture is not willing to do, to step up to be a man and take responsibilities as a man and to marry this woman. And that's for some of you who are listening. God is saying it's time for you to leave because you've wasted the last two, the last three, the last 10 years of your life. And that man has not stepped up to marry you. He's treating you like a side chick. He won't commit to you. He's not a Boaz. Hello, somebody. He's somebody that's a boy, not a boy. 
has because he will not step up and fulfill his responsibility as a man. And that's what God has called men to do. Even in marriages as a man that's thinking about leaving his wife and leaving his family, that's not of God. That's not a Boaz. That's a boy. Boys can't accept responsibility. Boys can't make the sacrifices that need to be made all for this marriage to work. Boys are immature. Real men step up to the plate and they do what God says them to do, even if they've got to suffer to do it. Woo! In Jesus' name. That's what Boaz did. And there's a woman and a man out there in a dead end relationship, and God can't send you the right man or the right woman because you're wasting your time and dead in relationships with people that do not know God and do not want to know God. Woo! That's some tough stuff. But it's true. It's time for you to leave in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm out of time. There's somebody listening to the sound of my voice. And yes, you need to say, yes, Lord, I will leave. I, I got the message. Christians must at times discern when it is time for them to leave to survive or even to leave to thrive. Because God may be trying to send you to a good place where you can thrive. And undoubtedly, in the end, that's what it's going to be. Not just survival, it's going to be thrival. I just made up that word. That's somebody who needs to say, yes, Lord, I will leave the sin in my life. This is where I get to tell you this gospel story. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised again on the third day so that today you may be able to leave the sinful life that you're in. And to be saved, we all had to leave it. And really, if you think you're saved and you haven't left the sinful life, God has not metamorphosized your life and transformed your life. If you uh, got better at sinning after you think you gave your life to Jesus Christ or remained the same, then you're not really saved. And you've got to say, yes, Lord, I will leave this sinful life. Yes, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried and raised again on the third day so that today I may be saved in Jesus' name. She prayed that prayer for the first time. Made that commitment for the first time. Pray this simple prayer. Father, I do believe that Jesus is God's your only son. I do believe that he died for my sins, was buried and raised again on the third day. And I do believe that today I am saved because I accept him coming to my heart, transform me, enable me to leave the life I've been living behind, that I may walk in newness of life and be made into the image of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, you have been born into the body of Jesus Christ. If you are at the body of Jesus Christ here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you've been born into the body of Christ. And we want to see you this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. After I finish praying, come down and let me know that you pray to accept Jesus Christ. And we will accept you into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. If you're nowhere near us, we're praying that God will send you to the right church. I mean, you need to be in a church. I mean, get in your mind that you're going to allow the Holy Spirit that sealed your salvation to lead you to the right church for you, right where you are in Jesus' name. Somebody else listening, maybe you've 
uh, pray to accept Jesus Christ, but you've never been baptized. And again, if you are here anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, that's the first step of obedience. We will accept you into the body of Christ, set up a baptismal day, and accept you into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Some of you may have been listening or watching or attending Bethlehem for a while now, but you've never committed. You're like uh, the boy, the young boys, I say today, they never commit to women. They spend uh, half of their lives, 10 years, 12 years, and they never got married. Uh, you've been living with us, but you won't commit to us. Woo! I didn't even mean to meddle like that. Uh, but we want you to become a part of the body of Jesus Christ here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. As for prayer, we do believe in the power of prayer, and God is working and moving tremendously as we continue to make his house a house of prayer. Maybe you listen tonight. And you've got to say, and you've decided to say, yes, Lord, I will leave. There's other things you may need to leave. Yes, Lord, I'll leave smoking. Yes, Lord, I'll leave alcohol. Yes, Lord, I'll leave drugs. Uh, yes, Lord. And you want to recommit your life to Jesus Christ. And we'll come and join you with that commitment and there's another, yes, Lord, I will leave to accept your call to preach, your call to serve. Yes, Lord. See, many times it's hard to accept the call to preach because, whoo, God could really metamorphosize your life. That's one of the things we were talking about. And I keep saying we, but the women at the First Ladies Conference was talking about when their husband accept the call, it throws their lives in upheaval. And it can be an upheaval, but it's one of the best upheavals that ever happened to me. And I, I guarantee you, if you submit to God, he, he will possibly metamorphosize your life, but it be, ooh, it will be for the better. For the better. So Bethlehem and Saints of God, I want to thank you for listening or watching tonight, this evening, this morning, ah, this afternoon. And let me go ahead and give the benediction. And as always, Bethlehem, we want to challenge you to stay connected. Stay connected to God's person. Stay connected to God's precepts. And stay connected to God's people. I want you to stay connected to God's vision for our church to reach more. In 2024, 24, 25 and new families who want to add to the body of Christ here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, 15 baptisms, which soul salvations, uh, to which in order for them to be baptized, they need to have accepted Jesus Christ, 15. We want to reach more in 2024. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. You are truly worthy to be praised. We lift you up. And we say thank you for all that you're doing in the life of our church, in the life of those who are connected to our church, through our church. Father God, put your heads of protection around us. Keep us safe from our harm and danger until we meet again. And the people of God said, amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord, Bethlehem, you are dismissed in Jesus' name.